almost all of you know those dreadful people who will tidy up. Well, mites, spelt M-I-T-E-S, are like that. You can hardly see the little creatures without a microscope, but they seem to have appointed themselves the dustmen of the world. They go about clearing up rubbish, and like all tidy persons, mites are forever trying to get rid of the things that other people want to keep. You are watching cheese mites on the screen now, and you cannot convince them that a tasty piece of gorgonzola is any use in the world. It's rubbish, they say. Let's eat it all up. And soon that good chunk of cheese is nothing but mites. Stir as you will, you will find no cheese, only mites. And if you give them a fresh lump of cheddar, it is soon engulfed by a wave of hungry little fellows tidying it away. The fig mite is another mite who cannot agree with human beings as to what is rubbish and what isn't. He and his friends are determined to clear dried figs right off the face of the earth. And here they are at the job. Bulb mites eat up decaying bulbs to get them out of the way. And in their enthusiasm, often destroy healthy bulbs too. Every gardener knows that. The bulb mite starts life in an egg, but the outside is too thick for you to see very clearly what is happening inside. It is easier to watch the gradual development of life in the egg of a closely related mite. You can see the legs forming now. And now the egg is nearly ready to hatch out. At length, the tiny mite reaches this world, not trailing clouds of glory, but trailing the old eggshell behind it, and starts off on a life devoted to tidying up the universe. The young bulb mite at first has only six legs. However, in this second stage of its life, it is much more grown up and has eight legs. Often the number of bulbs in a garden is limited and food becomes short. If this happens, the young mite stops feeding, changes its outer skin into a coat of armor and draws in all its legs except the front ones which become claws. So it waits, perfectly packed for transport until it can seize a passerby and get carried away to a more congenial home where food rations are not quite so limited. Then it turns back into a hungry eight-legged mite again. It now passes on to the grown-up stage. This is the lady. She has what one may describe as comfortable curves. Her husband is a fine figure of a mite 
ready to tackle all the bulbs in the border. Compared with a bulb mite, the beetle mite is a really useful scavenger. He works overtime in autumn, trying to eat up all the dead leaves that lie about the woods. He looks rather like a pincushion come to life. There are other mites that crawl about the ground, busily trying to tidy up the surface of the earth by devouring rubbish. Seen near too, they are really lovely, like painted and decorated super spiders. Other mites live under the bark of dying trees and eat the dead wood. As they are never seen except by the scientist with his microscope, nature must have decorated them like this for the fun of the thing. And no one has ever been able to tell why this little fellow, who, like Hercules, tries to clear out stables, should go about his work in a crinoline. Mites with long noses and fierce claws live under haystacks, but they do not devour decaying hay. They lie in wait for tiny insects, which they think want tidying off the face of the earth. Other savage hunters are water mites, whose legs are beautifully trimmed with fringes to help them swim. If only this one were a few thousand sizes larger, it has exactly the right action for successful channel swimming. The black sheep of the mite family is a cousin, the false scorpion. The false scorpion does not even pretend to help nature tidy up the world, but it openly lives a life of crime, preying on weaker creatures and developing a regular arsenal of pincers and claws for seizing his victims. He's actually armed to the teeth. When this bold bad brigand finds the neighborhood too hot to hold him, he seeks out an unsuspecting fly engaged on a wash and brush up. A little patience and perseverance have to be exercised. And then he gets a free joyride, flying away to fresh fields for mighty works.